until now we have studied the short run equilibrium for the firm and the profit or loss situation for the firm in short run what would be the case in the long run how would the firm behave in the long run how would it, it how would its cost curves and revenue curves change in the long run now we had seen that the firm was in a situation of super normal profits in the long sorry in the short run so the short term super normal profit situation is shown by this section you can see that the price is set by the market which is p and at price p we have the ar and mr curve all of them are same you also have your short run marginal cost curve smc1 is the short run marginal cost curve one you also have your short run average cost curve sac1 is your short run average cost curve now what is happening is at this point in this section you see that mr is equal to smc at this point so this is the point of equilibrium this is the point of equilibrium so you will produce on number of units now when you are producing on number of units now you compare your revenues and cost your revenue is en wherein your cost is cn we can see that en is more than cn and thus you will have a situation of super normal profits from c you will draw a line perpendicular to y axis or parallel to x axis and the rectangle that you get would be the portion of super normal profits let me clear this thing up for you now the firm is earning super normal profits when the firm is earning super normal profits other firms also get attracted to the market seeing the super normal profits that the firm is earning let's say you are into a business which has enormous profits it has super normal profits don't you think it will attract other people also to your business they would also want to earn super normal profits just like you your friends your relatives your neighbors and other persons who know you they will get attracted to your business so in the same manner when a firm is earning super normal profits other firms also try to enter the market now what happens is when they try to enter the market suddenly the supply in the market increases and here we can see that the supply has increased the earlier price set by the market was p now the equilibrium price would be p1 which is set by s1 s1 and dd s1 s1 is the new supply curve so this is the price that the firm would agree that the firm would accept because it is the price taker so p1 is the new price that it accepts so again now p equals to ar equals to mr now in the second short run what will happen is my marginal cost will change this is my new marginal cost curve this is my new short run average cost curve 
and this is my P A R M R and D curve. So you can see that now you have reached a new equilibrium point which is OQ. Now you have to produce OQ number of units to attain to be at the equilibrium. Now what is the situation? Now you can see that at this point E1 your cost is equal to your revenue. Both are equal. Therefore, you are not earning any profits. You are not earning any losses or incurring any losses. And thus, you can see that the firm has attained equilibrium. You can see that the firm has attained its optimum position wherein it is recovering it its explicit as well as implicit cost so this will form my long run average cost curve which is this curve you can see that your long run average cost curve is tangent with your short run average cost curve SAC1 and then it is going down and finally cutting the average revenue and marginal revenue curve at E1 and finally moving up. We have learned how to derive the long run and the short run average cost curve in our earlier chapters. So it's just the extension that we've taken from that chapter. So at this point, you can see that the firm has attained equilibrium. So if the firm would be producing OQ number of units, you can say that the firm would be producing optimum number of units in the long run. But Actually, in the market, the firm does not reach the equilibrium point so early. It's a limitation that we can't show it on the graph, but I'll just try to explain it. So what happens is, you saw that the supply in the firm increased, oh, supply in the market increased because of an increase profit that the firm is earning. The firm was earning super normal profits in the short run. So other firms got attracted and entered the market. They also become, became the sell sellers in the market. So now the supply in the market increased from SS to S1, S1. So this led to a drop in price from P to P1. It was quite possible that the firms would have incurred losses at this situation. So this would have made other firms to exit. Some firms would have exited from the market. So this would have again brought up a new supply curve which would have again increased the price. Increase the price. Maybe at this point at this price, some firms would have incurred losses. So they would have exited as well. Again, the supply in the market would have decreased. And finally, you reach a situation wherein the firms are earning normal profits. So please remember this point that in the long run, under perfect competition, no firm can earn super normal profits. No firm will incur losses because if the firms are earning super normal profits, it will attract other firms into the market. The supply will rise leading to a drop in the selling price and thus their profits will get reduced 
from supernormal profits to just normal profits. Second case, if the firms are earning or incurring losses, you will see that the firms will exit the market and there will only be few firms that will be left in the market. So this will lead to a drop in supply in the market which will lead to a rise in the price and thus you will have those firms which were incurring losses to come to a position of normal profit. So in long run no firm will incur losses, no firm will have any super normal profits. They will just be earning normal profits. So here we have in the long run LAC is tangent to the demand curve. We see that this curve LAC is tangent to this demand curve. Like in short run, short run average cost curve is tangent to the demand curve. In the same manner, in the long run, the long run average cost curve is tangent with the average revenue curve, that is the demand curve. And where tangency is achieved, where the long run average cost curve is tangent with the demand curve, you will see that the firm is incurring least cost there. And this would be the optimum quantity that the firm should produce in the long run. So if the firm is producing that much quantity, we can say that it is operating at the optimal capacity. So this was about the long run equilibrium of the firm under perfect competition.